Hello, welcome to Prezim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 6, Nullable Types in C Sharp. In this session, we will learn Nullable Types in C Sharp and about Null Coalescing Operator. Now, actually in C Sharp, we can broadly divide the types into two categories, value types and reference types. In our previous module, we have already seen value types, you know, the built-in value types like integer, double, float, decimal, etc. Okay, and we also have, apart from these built-in value types, we also have reference types. We have seen one of the built-in reference types, which is string. String is actually a class. Okay, and examples of reference types include classes, interface, delegates, arrays, etc. We will talk about the differences between value types and reference types uh, in detail in a later session. Okay, at this point what we need to understand is that in C Sharp the types can be divided into two broad categories, value types and reference types. Examples of value types, int, float, double, etc. Examples for value types, classes, interface, delegates, etc. And another point that we need to keep in mind at this point is the default value for reference types is null, whereas the default value for value types is some form of zero. For example, if it's an integer, the default value for any variable of type integer is zero and they cannot hold null values. Let's actually look at a demo. So for example, I told you a uh, string, which is a class, is actually a, a reference type. So, for example, when I say string name equals null, and then if we try to compile this, it will compile without any problem because reference types can have null values. But whereas, if I create a value type, for example, integer is a value type, so int i equal to null, and if we try to look at this, we already have got the red squiggly cannot convert null to an int because it's a non-nullable value type. So i is a value type and you cannot initialize that to a null value. Okay, but whereas reference types can have null value. So that's one important difference at this point between value types and reference types. There are several other major differences between these two which we will be talking about in a later session. Okay, now if I have to store a null value in a value type, how do I do that? Is that at all possible in C Sharp? Absolutely. In C Sharp, the value types can be actually divided into two types again, non-nullable value types and nullable value types. So if we go back to the presentation, so by default, value types are non-nullable. To make them nullable, use question mark. So let me give you an example for that. So here i is a non-nullable integer data type. Now if I have to make this nullable, all I have to do is use a question mark. And now look at that, that red squiggly goes away. Which means if you want to make a value type nullable, just put a question mark next to the type. That makes it nullable data type. And why did C Sharp introduce this? There are actually several reasons. One of the reasons is, let's say for example, you have a form like this, you know, where a user has to supply his first name, last name, which are mandatory. But whereas, are you a major? This field is optional. And, if the, and the options for this are yes and no. Okay. And if the, as this field is optional, he might choose not to answer. If he says, I mean, if he didn't answer, are you a major? Then, how will you store that value? So let's say, for example, we have a boolean flag here. Boolean, are you major in the application? Now, this can only be true or false because look at this. Are you a major is, we don't have a question mark, meaning it's a non-nullable value type. Okay, so if it's a non-nullable value type and a boolean value can only take true or false, but here, if the user doesn't select yes or no, it means he didn't select any answer for this field and this field is optional. So what value will you initialize this field with? 
is it true or false if you if you initialize that with false it's as if the user has said no okay so we should be in a position to store null values in this variable of type boolean because are you a major yes no the user did not answer there are three options actually if the user didn't answer it means he did not select any of the yes or no options for this question so if he didn't select any of the options then i should be capable of storing null value otherwise we will not be in a position to differentiate between the user not answering the question and saying no if we store this value as false that's why these nullable types are so much useful and another reason why these nullable value uh, nullable types are so useful is because you know databases does not have the concept of value types or reference types whether if it is nvar care integer whatever is the data type you know you can store null in the column of a table in a database for any data type okay but value types and reference types are only c sharp concepts okay so when it comes to working with c sharp and databases we have to have you know some form of transformation between nulls and non null value types but with these nullable value types now we don't have to do that conversion anymore you know it makes working with database fields very much easy so these are some of the reasons why this nullable data types are very helpful in c sharp so let's complete this example so i can make this boolean are you major now so within this form if the user does not select yes or no options then this field will be null anyways okay and let's say for example we want to check if are you major is equal to true we can say console dot write line maybe user is major you can either you know say are you major is equal to true or you can simply say are you major dot value from the intellisense if you look at this this value actually returns a boolean data type not a nullable boolean data type okay so you can say if it has to be false so you can either say if this is true user is major if not true user is not major so you can either say it this way or you can say it if are you major is equal to false either of them will work and yes okay keep in mind a nullable boolean data type can hold three different values true false or null if it is true we are saying user is major if it is false user is not major and if it's not true and if it's not false the only other option that's available it could be null so we can just say console dot write line user did not answer the question okay so now we are in a position you know if the user didn't answer the question here yes or no he didn't select any of these options then are you major will be null and will be in a position to say user did not answer the question but in case if we didn't have this boolean flag we have we may have to initialize that to false so in that case we would not have been in a position to differentiate between the user was didn't answer the question or he's not major so now if we go ahead and run since are you major is null we get that user did not answer the question okay a little grammatical mistake there all right on the other hand if he says true then obviously user is major 
okay so that's about nullable types you know uh, even the integer types you can make them nullable okay all value types you know they have they have the respective counterpart nullable types another concept that we'll talk about is the null coalescing operator which is really interesting now let's say for example i have a field called um you know number of tickets tickets on sale equal to let's say 10 okay i have tickets on sale and i have another variable let's call available available tickets let's say this tickets on sale is a nullable data type and there are no tickets on sale right now so which means tickets on sale is null so if tickets on sale is null then obviously there are no tickets available so if tickets on sale is equal to null then we know available tickets we want to initialize that to zero else let's close this brace else available tickets equals whatever are the tickets that are on sale and finally let's print how many tickets are available so we can say available tickets equals available tickets now look at this we've got an error here it's saying okay i cannot implicitly convert type int question mark to int meaning there is no implicit conversion between a non-nullable type and a nullable type okay we have to be explicit about the conversion and one way to do that is simply say dot value dot value if you look at the intelligence it returns a non-nullable counterpart an int if you look at that int without a question mark so that's one way to do that or you can use the cast operator we will talk about implicit and explicit conversion in another session in detail so you can either use this conversion okay what we are doing is okay this is a non nullable type if you look at this tickets on sale it's a non it's a nullable data type but an int without a question mark is a non nullable data type so we are forcing non nullable data type to be converted uh, sorry nullable data type to be converted into non nullable data type and assigning it to this variable okay so if I go ahead and run this, obviously, since tickets on sale is now, available tickets will be zero. But on the other hand, if you initialize that to some number, maybe 100 tickets on sale, obviously, available tickets will be 100. So what's going to happen here? It will check, okay, tickets on sale. Is tickets on sale now? No, it is equal to 100. So it comes to the else block. Okay, tickets on sale, value is 100. It will convert that to non nullable data type integer and store it and stores it in this variable and finally we print that out okay now look at this if it is null is zero you know instead of null we are initializing that to a default value because this cannot hold null this variable because it's a non nullable integer data type okay now do we have to have so many lines just to do that if it is not null use the value that is present in available uh, in tickets on sale otherwise use some default value so do we really need to have these many lines of code just to do that simple thing no not really that's why we have this null coalescing operator which we can make use of and the way we do that is pretty simple you can get rid of all these lines and you can simply say int available tickets is equal to tickets on sale question mark 
question mark that's your null coalescing operator and whatever is the default value that you want to initialize this variable with in case if this nullable data type is null okay so what this line is doing it's pretty simple if tickets on sale is null then use this default value otherwise use the value that is present inside this variable it's as simple as that so it's just one line so if we go ahead and run uh, the behavior will be the same except that instead of using if and else we are using the null coalescing operator which is very simple to use so this is without null coalescing operator and this is with null coalescing operator so you can see the difference you know the number of lines has been reduced so that's it. Thank you for watching. For more resources, you can refer to these things on the slide. Have a good day. Bye-bye.